Uh, next up is uh, another hotly contested topic we discussed on the Discord. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> People were uh, there's a lot of arguments about that. And, yeah, we had um, a good discussion about that the other day. I I really want to put a big note here: is if you came from a normal .NET background, your instinct is to throw exceptions. Now, exceptions. I, I don't. Okay, there's a whole whole topic. I could go on another big rant. I'm not going to. I will just say one thing as a shorthand: exception by its definition are exceptional. They are a case where an edge case has occurred. They are things like trying to read a file, and the file doesn't exist. It's out of your control. The file system didn't work as expected. Um, or in, in the case of uh, compile time exceptions or other exceptions, which are actually problems with the code, uh, they are costly. They are very costly to throw. And so in a good example of this, and I, this, is, this is probably a good example to show my own failings when I was younger, <laughs> I was working in XNA. And I was building a grid system. So I was building a grid of uh, tiles, and I, I basically uh, you, you you create what are called behaviors, and you you'd iterate through different behaviors, and they all had a very uh, Unity-like uh, structure. So you had your your start, your update uh, loops, and so I did the the usual thing. You know, you initialize your grid of objects as a grid of uh, a nested interarray, and then you iterate through each of the ints. You draw a tile, and then you have a character move along the tile. So this was really early on. I was learning how to do programming for for games. And when I hit the edge of my grid, you could get the index out of bounds exception, right? Because you're going to hit a point where I was checking the neighboring tiles to see enemies to attack them or whatever. And when I hit a, a tile on the far left or the far right of my game, there wouldn't be the neighboring tile. So when I was creating an array of the tiles around me, they didn't exist. So how do I handle this? Well, it's an exception as far as I'm concerned. So I would throw an exception because there isn't a tile there. And I would then catch the exception with a try block and say... You know, no tile found. And I thought I was being clever. I was doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah. An exceptional case. And it amazed me, because it was brand new to this idea. I moved my character to the left of the screen and started walking down the side. And it didn't break, because I had my try-catch block, but it chugged. It was a tile, a single sprite, drawn on a single sprite, holding down on the input, and my game was just chugging along. And I was thinking, there's nothing, there's no processing here. How the hell is my game so slow? <laughs> because exceptions are really slow. They are not meant for that. Now, in a normal event-driven application, events are thrown when something goes wrong. They, they are thrown when a file isn't found. They are thrown when an API doesn't return the data expected. They are um, event-driven, and they are rare. You don't throw exceptions in something that can realistically have... Um, Especially update loops. Never throw an exception update loop. That's just a given. You don't want something to happen there. But even in this case, even though it's only in awake, if this is the pattern you're following, exceptions are going to cause chugging. And even if you handle them, the whole point is you are literally throwing an exception. And exceptions are saying it broke. Something literally broke. This isn't an exception. This is a known expected case. It should be there, but it isn't there. That's not exceptional. That is a configuration problem or... It is an issue with building your application. So you could argue it might be fine if you're using these as guidance for yourself in the editor. But even then, I throw warnings personally because I would, I would default. So, so there's a, a term I like called batteries included, which means don't let your code get into a state where it'll break. Best case scenario, have a default implementation that doesn't do exactly what you want, but kind of works. In the case of no mouse controller, I would rather debug log a warning to say, couldn't find the mouse controller, I'm going to just have zero input from the mouse. It's not ideal. Your, app, your application doesn't break. You still get the warning, just like you would with the exception, and your app continues running on without any hitches or, or exceptions. So some of that's personal preference, but I will say if you literally read the guidelines from Microsoft, they will tell you, do not throw exceptions for known problems. If you, if you can guess that a problem is going to occur, that doesn't qualify as an exception. It's, it's only for things which are outside of your control, which could come back from a nebulous external space. I'm trying to see if I can extract a, an interface from this and then kind of give an example of what you're talking about. Uh, so for instance, I think the only public thing here that gets used is this tile clicked uh, event. Everything else is, oh, well, we also have a public changed mouse oh change mouse mode so I would do that extract those and then maybe current mode is public as well so people can check on it so it next and then so now we have this interface for mouse controller and I could just create a public class null 
mouse controller that handles these things. So I mouse controller. Oop. I don't know why I'm not getting my IntelliSense on this. Okay. And here we could do something like debug.warn can't. Uh, this is a null mouse controller. So whatever you want to say. So then up here, now we can switch back to the game controller and we can say and I mouse saying, controller. Yeah, exactly. And if, instead of saying it's null, say in the case where it's not there, we will assign it to a new instance of that mouse controller. Yeah, and that's that's that whole concept of batteries included. Now this thing is not going to break your game. It's just not going to function the way you want it to. And it'll be, I imagine, it'll be very obvious uh, when when whoever's developing this turns it on and says, "Hey, well, what the heck's going on here?" Oh, uh, and that's great because you're getting a lot. You're, you're you're lowering that feedback loop. You know, with an exception, I think there is a little bit of a psychological thing that happens because an exception comes up, your, your your console goes red, and you're like, oh, what could this be? At least this is something that you've already planned for. So at least someone in the past, uh, some version of you in the past was aware of this, and it makes it a little nicer to say a warning and say, you might be like, oh, that's right, I something's wrong. Maybe I, maybe I created a new scene out of the game controller, but I forgot the mouse controller. Got it, and you just added it. I, I will say, so one thing for anybody who's curious, uh, it wasn't arbitrary that Charles called it a null mouse controller. That is something called a null object pattern. Yeah, it and is it's a worth pattern. Looking into. It's basically a specific way of providing a default implementation that has no implementation. You gave and me ideas is, for two... Oh, sorry. Continue. No, no. Go for it. Go for <laughs> no, it. I, was just, I was gonna say you gave me an idea for two videos in this one stream. <laughs> one with the exceptions and now one with this, the null pattern because those are two things that have been coming up pretty frequently lately. Uh, but no, yeah, yeah. You, you seem like you had uh, a good point <laughs> Oh yeah, I was just going to say that it's a null object pattern. It's it's something to look into if you're curious. That the point about it is, it is an implementation that has no implementation. It may sound weird to say, but it's basically saying um, null. Without again, whole big rant I can go on to. Uh, null isn't a concept really found in nature. It's not a, it's not a thing that really makes sense. Uh, normally, when you're referring to an item, it's uh, it's in some state. It's not really. It's not really such a thing as a null state. The classic, a glass is, is half full or empty or whatever, but it's, it's never null. <laughs> it's there, it's something. And so you can you can live your life by opening your, you know, there's a there's a glass on the table, and regardless of whether it's empty, full, half full, overflowing, doesn't matter. It's you the world exists regardless. In a weird way, if you think about what null means, it means imagine the world breaks because the glass isn't there. Like it doesn't make you know what I mean? It's such an odd concept. So when you're designing systems that can talk to external systems that in theory shouldn't break your code. So if there is no mouse input, the whole application shouldn't crumble. It should instead go, well, you didn't give me a mouse controller, so I just won't use the mouse. Yeah. It's not ideal, but it's not it's not a, a critical error. And that's the, that's the defining difference. An exception literally is, oh my god, I like this game is about saving and reading files and there's no files, there's no file system. I literally can't do what this application is for. <laughs> That is an exception, and it could or, be detrimental to the data. Like if you have if you have data that's saving or in some weird state, like that exception could literally corrupt your your game in the future, potentially. I mean, I, that's something that I've heard in the past that like that you throw you throw exceptions to stop your your uh, your system, your game, or your your application from getting into such a yeah, horrid you literally state. wanted to. yeah. Like for example, if 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 you've got a game which is in a broken state, and if someone tries to save the game. A good example of this is for all the Pokemon fans out there. Missing no, anyone who ever found the mysterious Pokemon, is one thing to have an issue where that occurs because someone gets a missing number, which, by the way, it took me way too long to figure out that's missing number. I was, <laughs> as a kid, blew my mind. Um, so it's one thing to get that Pokemon found and it causes a, a, an incompatible state in the game and it breaks things. But if you remember with the warnings when you were a kid, it was, it's fine to catch him. Don't save the game with him in your party because that's a difference because the game is now in a critical state. And if you save it, you're saving exceptions into your code. So what a lot of people will do is they'll throw exceptions to say, this is unrecoverable. The game shouldn't, any data you save now is fundamentally broken. Don't do something wrong now, you know? So use exceptions when you're kind of saying, that's it, we're done. We can't really recover from this problem. Um, or it's a third party thing like a file system or an API. They're the only cases I really use those for. Um, but one thing I did want to come back to actually, uh, the, 
head head back over there okay, for one. Yeah. Thing. I, I thought you were gonna rant. I was gonna do the rest of no, this. No, no, there's literally <laughs> something in the code here. Uh, one thing we mentioned it before, but I just want to make a good point of this. One problem that you will get is so we're using this uh, null mouse controller as a way of saying uh, there wasn't one provided. But how are you going to fix that normally? You're going to get a warning in the console. Uh, I like to give myself an easy way to change that if it's not what I wanted. So above that mouse controller line, I personally like to write uh, warn. So just above line 27. We'll just do debug warning for now, just as a thing. So debug.log oh, okay. warning. Mm-hmm. And then say uh, no mouse controller. Oh, using right. the, you get a nice clean warning in the console. And then afterwards, do comma object or comma game object. Yep, so you know where it came from. You'll get a nice warning in the console. You do object? I usually do this. Is there a difference? Oh, do you? Yeah. Uh, no, well, no. This will this will give you the actual script, but I just usually the object is fine. I did the game object rather. Oh, yeah. It literally, either like it, it uses com. I think it uses um, uh, component. So it doesn't matter. Anything that extends component will do. I can't spell. Default. <laughs> <laughs> So I do that, and uh, that'll give me a warning in the console for everything that's not there. And then what I can do is click on it. It'll jump me to this, and then I can fix it, if that's my intention. Uh, But the counter to that is I also personally don't do the way you've done it in the null mouse controller myself, because that is technically an implementation. And if we're being Mm. pedantic to the uh, version of the null object pattern, I don't like having implementation. That's fair. That's fair. Um, It's also the very... Yeah, there's also the very mild thing that debug log does have some mild overhead. Not much, not enough that it's ever really a warning, an issue to handle, but it's just something I try to be, you know, aware of. Gotcha, yeah. Cool, yeah, makes sense to me.